Amen, church. We have a ministration to give. Believing that God would minister to somebody's heart this night. That's right. And we want to pick it from Matthew chapter 24. From verse 15. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ told them. He said, when ye see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He said, let he that read it understand. Church, look at your neighbor and tell that person abomination of desolation. This night, we want to talk about abomination that make it desolation. God bless you. Praise yeah. the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Church, I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, abomination that make it desolation. Abomination that make it desolation. Now, church, we have two words here, abomination and desolation. I want to make us understand the meaning of these two words. Firstly, we have abomination. Now, abomination is having a feeling of extreme disgust. Hatred, extreme detestation for something. That is something that has been made shamefully vowed. Now let's look at desolation. Desolation means to make something deserted, to make something barren, to make something lifeless. Now my sisters, you might have done something so abominable that has brought about the desolation in your life. You have done something so abominable that has brought barrenness in your life. That has made that angel to stop speaking to you. Now, my brothers, you've done something so abominable that has brought about poverty in your life. Now, church, let us look at the story of Jezebel, for example. Now, we all know the story of Jezebel. She committed so many abominable acts in her time. Now, so what was the desolation that was brought upon her? She was thrown down, and yet she was eaten by dog. That was a very strong desolation. Also, let us look at the story of Ahab. We all know the story of everything abominable did. If we went to marry an outsider, which we know is Jezebel. Now, Chot, a very strong desolation was also brought upon him. Now, I want us to look at the condition of this world today. In Galatians 5, from verse 19, we all know 18 works of the flesh were listed there, starting from adultery. We have fornication, we have lascivi lasciviousness, and so on. Church, praise the Lord, church. Now, the condition of this world today, those works of the flesh that were listed there, each and every one of them is an abominable act. Now, I want us to lick us, I want to lick us to the story of Noah in Genesis chapter 7. We all know this story. Of all everything, the abomination that was committed in that time. And it brought about a strong desolation. We know the story of the flood. Now let us look at the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19. We all know what they did. Even to the end of wanting to sleep with an angel. With angel, even though it was out of ignorance. But church, that was an abomination. And a strong desolation was brought upon them. Now, we are looking at the condition of this world. William Brown made a very strong and striking statement. Let us look at America, for example. William Brown said, if God himself does not punish America, God is obligated to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to them. Now, Charles, that is a very strong statement. Now, in the time of William Brown also, there was something strange that happened in the sky. We were hearing of unidentified flying objects. I know some of us heard of that story. Now, the scientists then they were like, oh, I think maybe angels are, uh, maybe aliens have invaded us. So they sat, they went into the sky, they could not catch those things. But William Brown, being as revelated as he would, he said to his church, those flying objects are actually angels that have come to check this world and to report back to God for him to confirm if what he has been hearing concerning this world is true. Now, church, there is a very strong desolation coming upon planet Earth. The Bible said the Lord will heal this earth like a pendulum. Church, abomination that make it desolation. That's right. Can we clap for Jesus? That's the message. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen and amen. We are in an age whereby a lot of people no longer have the love for truth. Mm. We are in an age whereby a lot of people no longer want to love God. But church, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke something. Whenever you hear the word abomination, it speaks of something that irritates God. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke something in the book of Matthew chapter 24 from verse 15. He said, when ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. He that readeth, let him understand. But if you read down, he was talking of 
How, what happened in AD 70? Uh, what happened in AD 70? But church, he was referring to Daniel the prophet. Daniel chapter 9 spoke of an abomination of desolation. But it happened one time in history whereby a man known as Antiochus for Epiphanes came into the scene. He raided the temple of God. He stopped the oblation of the sacrifice. How was he able to achieve that? He brought in a swine, sacrificed those swine, took the blood of the swine, and, and forced the priest to drink the blood. That was a serious abomination. He erected an image known as Dagon and what? Burned the Torah. It was a serious abomination of desolation. In every age, in every age, there was a warning of God. Church, in every age, God has his own warning. But whenever this warning is being disobeyed, abomination takes in and what? Desolation is seen in the land. I want you to understand that your coming here today is not in vain. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. He said they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. The evidence that you are here today is because there is something God has for you today. That's right. The Lord Jesus Christ has his generation in his time. In the book of Luke chapter 7 from verse 31, the Lord Jesus Christ had a question for his generation. He said, what shall I like in this generation as? And what are they like? And he had an answer to them in Luke chapter 16 from verse 15. He said that ye are like men that justify themselves before all men. But God knoweth your heart. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. A lot of people today, they have highly esteemed fornication. They have highly esteemed homosexuality. They have highly esteemed bestiality. They have even esteemed lesbianism. That is what we see in the church today. Apostle Paul had the generation of his own time. And he prophesied something in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. He said, the spirit speaketly expressing that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and the doctrines of the devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron. A lot of people, their conscience have been sealed with a hot iron, that whenever you present the truth to them, they will no longer hear it. Why? Because their conscience has been sealed. They no longer love for the truth. That is why when you tell a woman that a woman should not preach nor usurp authority over the man, their conscience has been sealed. They no longer want to hear the truth. Abomination that make it desolation. That's his description. Clap your hand for the youth contenders. Fire on. Amen, church. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Abomination that make it desolation. When you hear the word abomination, see, you cannot hear abomination without something following it. There is always an act of disobedience that brings abomination. That's Once right. there is a disobedience, an abomination comes, definitely there is a desolation. Church, God created this world. He made this earth and he laid laws and order that should govern the affairs of this world. But man always go astray. Man always go ahead to pervert God's work. And once you go against God's word, judgment comes upon you. Amen. The Bible makes us understand something. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God placed man in the garden of Eden to keep it and to dress it. But church, in that same Genesis chapter 3, it said that man disobeyed, man sinned against God, and man died that day. See, that same act of disobedience. Church, this same act of disobedience took the children of Israel into captivity. How do I know? The children of Israel, according to the book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, Daniel understood by books. Which books? The books of the prophets. In the book of Leviticus chapter 25, verse 3 and verse 4, Israel, they disobeyed God. God told them, even through Moses, that they should plant in, the six, in all the six months in their vineyard. But when they get to the seventh year, they do what? They should rest and observe the Sabbath. But church, they disobeyed God and they went ahead and planted even on the seventh year. Church, this is an act of disobedience. Forgetting that the Bible said in the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 2, it said, Thou shalt keep my Sabbath and thou shalt reference my sanctuary. But church, they did not only abstain from keeping his Sabbath, they went ahead and desecrated his sanctuary. How? They went and they, they, they offered sacrifice. 
that are not lawful unto God, abominable sacrifice, unclean animal in his sanctuary. They stink God's presence. This same act is seen even in our church today. Amen, church. This same act is seen in our God around the whole world. People who call themselves Christian, they went ahead and they stained themselves. They went ahead and they go against God's word and you think that God will bless you. It's a curse upon that man. It's a curse upon that woman. Now, church, I want you to understand something. God has his own laws and order. The Bible makes us understand, even in the book of Genesis, it said God made man a woman. In verse 2, verse 24, chapter 2, it said, Therefore shall a man leave his father's house and shall cleave unto a wife and shall become man and wife will become one flesh but church what are we seeing nowadays we are no longer seeing man and a woman we are seeing man and man how do i know the book of leviticus make us understand something leviticus about 20 make us understand something he said in chapter 18 verse 22 he said thou shalt not live with mankind as dwell with mankind for this was abomination now chapter 20 verse 13 even came on clear he said that shall not also lay with a man as he do it with a woman for his word abomination unto the lord and if you are fine that act you shall be surely be put to death and your blood shall be upon your head it is an abomination for a man for a man and a man to sleep with himself church this world is so perverted with all uncleanness we are looking at a dirty world and people's eyes are still closed. Church, these things are meant to make your eyes open. To look and make you see that your redemption is nearer. It makes you understand that Christ is coming soon. But what are we doing? We sit down and we just relax. Amen, church. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Church, this is the same act that made God a, a, a judge Sodom and Gomorrah. This same act is still seen today. Long gone are those days whereby... You know, a man will go into another man's wife, you know, a, 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 secretly. But nowadays, adultery is now the order of the day. Adultery has been legalized in so many countries now. Adultery is now an occupation. Church, this world is so dead. This world is so dead. Notice, it's the judgment upon them. The book of Leviticus about 20, verse 10. It said, if any man, any man that go, that lay with another man's wife, even with, with his own neighbor, that man and that woman shall surely be put to death. Death, death, death is always the answer for as many that goes against the other, the laws of God. And notice, once they are doing all these things, they will always want to come to the church and justify their own self. God is not mocked. Because the Bible says, in the book of Proverbs about 30, Proverbs about 30 verse 12, he said, there is a generation there is a generation that is pure in their own eyes, but yes, are not washed of their fitness. Either of them are so dirty, but they want to present as though they are clean. Church, God can never be mocked because that same book of Proverbs said, There is a way that cement right before man, but the end is destruction. God is putting for you at the junction of time when He will come and cut you off. As many, I repeat, as many that are in this act. That same book of Leviticus about 20 verse 7. He said, Ye shall sanctify yourself. Go and sanctify yourself for he is Lord. Because if you don't do it, if you don't go against those things, if you don't stop all those acts, church, and you think that he's not watching, God will come and will make you desolate. Amen. Amen, church. Abomination that make it desolation. Are we together? So we are talking of abomination that make it desolation. What is abomination that make it desolation? There are iniquity that defy God's sanctuary. So we are not telling you a religious story, but it is for you to design the sign of your time. Knowing the message of your day and receiving the angel of your visitation. Because Ecclesiastes chapter 8 from verse 5 says, Whosoever keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil. And the heart of a righteous man designed both signs and judgment. Judge. For every sign, remember there is a judgment that goes with it. We are seeing the sign of iniquity and we are hearing the voice of judgment. Why? Because every act of disobedience brings a destruction. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15, that it shall come to pass in that day that it will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandment and to do his statue. 
that this cause shall come upon thee and overtook thee. Church, cause is coming upon this earth. Why? Because man has defied the sanctuary of God. But the good news is, is that in every age, before there is any destruction, God will always release his arm of mercy upon his people. That's in right. every age, before God will do anything, he will send forth his a means of salvation before the people to call out the elect and to warn the people of the forthcoming destruction. So we are not exempted in this is God has also sent his message because the scripture said in Amos chapter 3, verse 7 that the Lord God will do nothing but reveal it in secret to his servant the prophet. Church, God has revealed his secret to his servant the prophet. But the scripture said in Malachi 4 by 5 and 6, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children to the father. But the question is, have you received the message? Not only that, Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, he said, When he shall begin to sound, then the mystery of God will finish, as he has declared to his servant the prophet. Church, God has destroyed his own, has declared his own work, but have you received it? So we are talking of abomination and make it destruction. God has also sent his own measure to call us out of the destruction. But how many have received the message? For Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who has believed our report? He said, Then to whom will the arm of the Lord be, be revealed? Church, you must believe our report tonight before the arm of the Lord be revealed unto you. And what That's is right. the message? The message in Revelation chapter 18 verse 1. He said, Come out of her, my people, and don't be a partaker of her sin. Church, come out of what? Come out of worthiness. Come out of immolarity. Come out of fornication. He said, then that dwells such things shall be destroyed. Sister, have you come out of that immolarity today? Are you still keeping the boyfriend and in the church thinking you go to heaven? You can never, never mock our God. Amen, Church. Church, are Amen. we together? Are we saying something? We are talking about fire something. on, there fire on. Price you must pay before you go to heaven. And that price in this age is to come out of all manners of immorality because that is the same thing that the wrath of God is revealed upon the children of the wicked. And for us to be saved, we must come out of them. Amen. Church, are we together? Amen. Church, and the Lord Jesus Christ said in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, that behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open his heart, I will come and sup with him. Church is coming to knock on the door tonight. If you open your heart for him to come and sup with you, we have a message in the land, but how many have received the message? Church, another thing I want us to understand is that why does the devil bring all these devices upon the people? Why does the devil bring immorality upon the people? Does he mean he benefited anything from what we are doing? No one, it is to deceive the people. You know why? The scripture said in Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, it said, many shall make you defied in that day. The wicked shall do more wickedly, but the wise shall understand. That is my emphasis. You say the wicked shall do more wickedly, but the wise shall understand. And in the book of Matthew chapter 24 from verse 12, what did he say? He said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many we was code. Judge, it is because iniquity will abound, therefore he want to weaken our code. But they will not allow that our love to was code because it is he that endure it to the end that shall be justified. That is the message of the hour. Amen, Church. Amen. Amen, Church. We are talking of abomination that make it destruction. And these are the signs of judgment. Destruction is coming upon this earth. But where would that destruction meet you? Abomination that make it desolation. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. That is youth contenders. Amen, Church. Amen. Abomination that make it desolation. When you hear abomination, it is something that nobody likes to hear. One of my pastors told me, one of my daddies, he said abomination is even worse than when you say sin. He said, the Igbo people, when they hear abomination, it changes their mentality. Am I saying something? It's not just the Igbo people, all nations. Abomination that make it desolation. Church, there is something that God hates. And man is calling it a normal thing. One man of God, of a big church, he said masturbation is not a problem. It is a mm. habit that you can stop. Now, a man of God called it a habit. God's word called it abomination. Which one will you pick? The man of God or God's word? That same man of God, he said that having a tattoo on, that the scriptures does not condemn your tattoo. That is, nowhere in the Bible says you should not have a tattoo on yourself. But church, the Leviticus 19.28 tells us that thou shall not have any marking upon yourself or print anything on your flesh for any reason i am the lord it is not in lord. god's word but that is an abomination but another man is calling it a normal thing that christ came to fulfill the law therefore christ has covered all that up church christ came to fulfill all the ceremonies in the law but as far as the commandments are concerned it is still happening till date that's if you don't right. keep his god will judge you for it 
abomination that maketh desolation. I want to look at something today because we live in a generation where all manner of things goes on and it all started because of a particular woman in the Bible. Matthew chapter 13 verse 33. The Lord Jesus Christ told us, he said the kingdom of God is likened unto a woman that took leaven and hid it in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. What is leaven? It is yeast. You add yeast to flour, what will happen to that flour? Pastor. Uh, what happens to the flour? It becomes bigger than what it is. Yes, no wonder when a man begins to drink alcohol, the evidence of his alcohol is the size of his stomach. That's right. Yes, the bigger the stomach, the level of alcohol that he has taken. Eh. The moment you see the stomach, you know this one has, has gone into sin so much. Amen, church. Church, what I am trying to tell us is that abomination brings desolation. And the Lord Jesus Christ told us that this particular woman, Revelations made us understand who that woman is. Revelation 17, John the Baptist, or John the Beloved rather, he said, and one of the seventh angel took me and said, come and I will show you the judgment of that great hall. We see upon many waters. The Bible said, and the woman had committed fornication with the kings of the earth. The question is, how did she commit fornication? And who is a fornicator? Is somebody following me? By is somebody own. following me? I want to let us know who a fornicator is. If you ask our sisters, who is a fornicator? You say, well, a fornicator is anybody that sleeps with a man that is not a husband. Is that not your definition? Now, let me tell you the Bible's definition of who a fornicator is. Attached to what you know. A fornicator is anyone that mingles him or herself with the affairs that this world has to offer. It's a fornicator. Man. Second Timothy 2 verse 4. He said, no man that warrant entangled himself with the affairs of this world so that he might be able to please him who has called him to be a soldier that's the scripture you are a fornicator or you are not somebody will say oh i have a i don't have a problem with my short skirt i don't have a problem with my earrings on a tuesday shilo a lady came to church blessed pure water drank pure water wash all her face and wash everything and she was going home and remove her earrings and put it in her ears and i looked at her I said, well, this one did not know why she came to church. Church, is somebody paying attention? There is God's righteousness for every age. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 11. He said, because they don't love the word of truth. He said, he will give them unto a strong delusion. That they should believe what? A lie. So it means all the miracles, signs and wonders are happening. They are only but the spirit of delusion. What is delusion? Something that is lifeless. You can receive a miracle, but the original, you don't have it. What is the original? If the spirit of him that raised up Christ dwells in you, he said that spirit shall quicken your mortal body. By that same spirit that raised up Christ, it will quicken you. That is the original. But wherever you are, you can go to any church at all. Anywhere that we see today, all tables are full of vomit. Mm. And there is no place clean. But God in this last age has given us a lot of opportunity to hear something that is original. It is Malachi 4, 5, and 6. If you don't hold, if you don't hold on to that, then you cannot hold on to anything. Abomination that maketh desolation. Church, that same woman, John said he looked and saw her and her name was written upon her head. Mystery. She's very mysterious. She appears to be very friendly, but she's not. Whenever the, her leader is moving, he carries little children as though he's the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. But he's only a Satan incarnate walking in the midst of the people of God. Mm. The Lord Jesus Christ said he's only a wolf in sheep clothing. Then. The Bible says she is Babylon the Great. Why? Because all her practices are all of pagan worship and nothing more. And her daughters have copied the same. They speak in tongues when they feel like. You shout when you feel like. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 1, he said, though I speak with the tongues of angels and have no charity, he mm. said, I'm but a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Empty drums make the loudest noise. I'm not to it. Church, he said, the woman had a name also written upon her, the abomination of the earth. That is who she is. And she's no other than the Roman Catholic Church. And she has so many daughters hanging outside there. And because of all the abomination, Desolation is hanging upon this earth. Amos 5 verse 18. He said, Woe unto that man or that woman that desired the day of the Lord 
He said, the door of the Lord is darkness and not light. It's like when a man is running from a lion and a bear met him. Or that man, he was trying to run away from a serpent. And while he put his hand on the wall, a scorpion beat him. Did that man escape? A am I talking to somebody? Did that man escape? He met a worse punishment than what he, was, what he had ever imagined. It is abomination that brings destruction. Judgment is hanging. There are two kinds of calls. Let's go, church. Man. There are two types of calls. Whenever you say God call you, God call you. Indeed, God calls you, but there are two types of call. The person that call God call and the person that call God. Church, did you hear what I said? The person that God call and the person that call God. The person that call God will justify himself and will glorify himself. The person that God call, Romans chapter 8 from verse 28. He said it for no we did predestinate to be conformed to the image of Christ. And in verse 29, he said, For whom he did predestinate, him he called. Whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. So the evidence that God calls you is that he will justify you and he will glorify you. Church, that is the evidence. The abomination that make it desolation, that is what we are talking of. Romans chapter 1 from verse 18. He said that for the word of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and all godliness for those that hold the truth in unrighteousness a lot of people are holding the truth in unrighteousness they believe that they are servants of god why because they they, they have the anointing of god but the bible says that we should make our calling and our election sure touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor make your calling and election sure Say it again. Make your calling and election sure. Make your calling and election sure. Revelation chapter 3, let us know the estate of the church today. The Bible says that they are miserable. He said they, 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 they were proud of what they have. They said they have need of nothing. They are increased in goods that they are rich. But the Bible says that they are what? They are wretched. They are miserable. They are poor. They are blind and they are what? Naked. That is the estate of the church today. Today, you see the church, they are naked. They are miserable. They are poor. Why? Because they have no need for the truth. Why? Because they, are lo they, they, they love iniquity more than God. But church, I want you to understand that whenever you come into the presence of God, no matter how you come, let me tell you, there are a lot of you sitting down here today, your heart is not right with God because of what you did, because of the thing you did. But church, Anytime you come into the presence of God, just open your heart. He, God, is waiting for you. He said he is knocking at the door of your heart. Only if you open up, he's ready to receive you. Amen, church. So it's clap for you, contenders. Amen, church. Amen. Second Thessalonians, from verse 12. He said, because they have not love for the truth, they have pleasure in unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? It is not standing in the right path with God. Am I correct? Am I right? In every generation, God has a standard for righteousness. In, let's look at the days of Paul. God had a standard for righteousness. The Bible said in Acts chapter 5, that the people of the world esteemed the church very high, that nobody could come and join them. Why? Because if you are a sinner, you come in, you will fall dead. But today, who esteems each other? The same practice is happening in the church. It's automatic. It's, it's, that's what is happening outside. And a man made a statement. He said the world has become more churchy. And the church has become more worldly. And that is the truth. We have so many worldly people sitting down. And outside the world, we have so many churchy people walking up and down naked. Why? They hold on to righteousness. They have pleasure in it. And for God's standard of righteousness for this generation, our sisters, whether you like it or not, it is thus says God's servant. It is thus says the word of God, both written and spoken. And two is a witness. Am I correct? He said to his daughters, do away with your earrings, bangles, necklaces, and all the painting that you have. That it is a problem we talk about. Something that should not be a salmon has become a salmon. Am I saying something, sisters? Ah, sisters are answering. I have a, we have an understanding that as you grow up, your clothes should grow with you. Am I correct? Every brother, man, brother, man or boy, sitting down. As you grow up, your trouser length grows. Correct? When I was small, I was wearing 
38 inches long. Now that I am tall, I'm wearing 41. So it means that it has increased. But our sisters, the longer they go, the shorter the skirts. It is a big problem. And church, it is not it is not to entertain anybody, but rather to make you know that the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, God knoweth them that are his. Let they that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And God will bless your hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we call for our youth contenders? Abomination that make it desolation. <laughs>